Hi, I'm Teresa Maletti. And this I'm is, Kathy Kasperzak. And we're from Centerville City Schools. Last weekend, we participated in the West Region uh, School Bus Safety Rodeo, and we both qualified for state. I came in first, and Kathy came in. I came in fourth. Awesome, yay! All right, so we're going to show you what the events look like that we participated in, and we'll do so again um, this coming Saturday. Uh, if you haven't done a rodeo, I highly encourage you to do so. It's a lot of fun. Find out where your local rodeo is and have fun with it. Okay, here we go. All right, so first up is Reverse Serpentine. With the Reverse Serpentine event, you need to, of course, have your hazard lights on, beep before you back. You're going to weave in and out between each four barriers. And you don't want to hit any of the barriers, neither the base nor the barrier themselves. And if you stop, this is a continuous motion, so stopping also will get you demerits. So we're going to watch as she weaves in and out of the barrels, and she'll finish or complete this particular event when the bumper of her bus is behind the very last barrel. And then she can move on to the next event. In all of the events, you usually have to uh, give some sort of indication that you've completed the event. And in this event, you would signify that by setting your parking brake, putting the gear shift in neutral, and honking your horn. Um, all of the little things that you do or do not do uh, result in demerits. So that is the reverse serpentine. Next up, we're going to take a look at the railroad crossing. This is our railroad event. You do a railroad crossing just as you would normally. 300 feet before, you're going to ask for silence. 100 feet before, your hazard lights come on, noisemakers go off, your window needs to be open before you arrive. You're going to stop no closer than 15 feet, no further away than 20 feet. At a normal railroad crossing, it would be 15 to 50 feet. But at uh, regional and state, it becomes no closer than 15, no further away than 20. You're going to pull your parking brake, put the bus in neutral, open your door, look no less than twice in both directions, and then you'll put the bus back into gear, close the door, release the brake, and move on. Once you're clear of the track by 50 feet, you'll turn your hazard lights off. You will turn your noisemakers back on if you choose to, and close your window if you choose to. And that concludes the railroad crossing event. Next up, we're going to do a right hand turn. Our next event is the right hand turn. The right hand turn, we have the indicator, of course we want our indicator to come on 100 feet before we make our turn. In this instance, the white line is a curb. We're going to um, utilize the white line as a curb line. So um, to see the boxes on the ground indicate a demerit zone. If the rear dual does not cover either of those boxes going into the turn or out of the turn, and she covered them so that she would get all of her points going into the turn, and uh, you don't want to hit the curb or the white line going out, and then you don't want to hit the demerit zone going out. She did not cover quite all of the demerit zone, so she probably would have gotten about 10 demerits coming out of that turn. Okay, our next event coming up is diminishing clearance. This is our diminishing clearance event. This will simulate going from a wider space into a much narrow space, starting with 10 inches on either side of the bus combined. Uh, then the next series is eight, the next series of cones is six, and then four, and then finally two, with only one inch on either side of the bus. Of course, this is a continuous motion event, so you cannot stop. You have to, you can go as slow as you want, but you have to keep those wheels moving. And um, the there's some flags uh, usually at the top of the base, and they only come out as wide as the base of the cone. So it's it's no 
there's really not an issue with them when they are there. It just comes out as far as the base. So once you get through that, um, there's no other demerits except for, like I said, hitting any of those cones um, on the way down, in or out. No stopping. Okay, our next event is going to be the Offset Alley. This event is called Offset Alley. It simulates going from one alley onto another. The opening there is 11 feet wide. Uh, there's a 40 foot space in between and then another 11 foot opening. The cones are set one foot apart. The gate is 10 feet long. You get through one series of gates. You jog to the left or to the right, depending on how your course is set up and you go through the other set. This is a continuous motion event, as most of them are, so if you stop, there are demerits given. If you hit a gate or cones, there's demerits given as well. Cones are 10, the gate is 25. As long as you keep moving and you don't hit any of the uh, barriers or cones, you maintain all of your points and of course if you continue your forward motion. Consider this kind of, um, if you have lawn equipment and cars and you need to get around them in a neighborhood, so you may not have alleyways, but you may have something similar to this obstacle. Next up is right hand turnaround. This next event is the turnaround event. It typically tends to be more challenging for most drivers, and most turnarounds are done when you're backing into an intersecting street to get turned around. In this case, we have three gates, and you want to stop no further away than 18 inches from the back barrier, and you do not want to hit either gate on the right or the left coming into it. There is a 40 foot forward section that you can do pull up. This is not a continuous motion event. You can stop and start this one. Pulling forward, however, you only have that 40 feet and no part of your bus can go over that line. So as you're backing here, uh, you have to determine when you want to take that pull up, if you need to take one, and without hitting that gate, of course. As you pull forward, you want to make sure you're cognizant of none, no part of your bus going forward of that line. And then when you back, you want to be no further away than 18 inches from that rear barrier. And of course, you don't want to hit the barrier, the barricade, so you want to stop before that happens. And once you do stop toward the back, they're testing, of course, depth perception, you're going to pull the brake, put it in neutral, and honk your horn. This will indicate to the judges that you are ready to be measured. Okay, typically in this event, you come out of the gates to your left. Because of our course setup, this is not possible. So we are going out to the right, but in a normal course, we would go out to the left. So you have to get in and out of the gates without hitting any of them. So again, pull the brake, put in a neutral, honk the horn. This indicates that they can measure. That's a little further away than what we'd probably like to see, but it's pretty good positioning. And now they're going to get out. And that is the turnaround event. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the left side student pickup and drop off. So this will be our left hand student side pickup and drop off. Your lights come on 300 feet before the stop. You do a traffic check before you arrive at the stop location. You make sure you see your student in their place of safety. I'm the student in this instance. When you arrive, you will pull your parking brake, put the gear shift in neutral, 
open the door. You will do a traffic check before you drop your hand, indicating to the student that it's safe to cross. When they start crossing, make sure they always cross at least 10 steps in front of the bumper of the bus. You do not want them close to that bumper. If you were to get rear-ended, that could push the bus into that student. Let's listen as Kathy does her pick up and drop off. Hi, the bus. All right, let's say hi, Kathy. Hi. How are you today? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Please take a seat. Okay. Nothing here, nothing here, going to my place of safety. Kathy's counting her mirrors like she did earlier. She's making sure that I'm still in my place of safety. She's doing her traffic check and she's moving away. Next up we have right side pick up and drop off and I will demonstrate that for you now.
sure there's no traffic coming around the bus. If it's clear, I want you to go to your place of safety, which is at the back of the bus, of bus number 54. I want you to stay at bus number 54's bumper until you see the tail lights of my bus. If at any time I honk my horn, that means danger. Recheck traffic. If you see no traffic or danger, look back to me for further instructions. Do you understand? Kathy is getting off the bus. One student got off the bus. Oh, take that back. I would have gotten demerits for not doing a traffic check before I let them get off the bus. So I'm going to do a traffic check before I let them off the bus. One student got off. One student is in their place of safety. One, two. This is the forward stop line event. It's literally a white line and you want to stop about four inches from the line, two inches if you're at state. This is a continuous forward motion and you, when you stop, if you start again, you gain demerits. If you hit the line or go over the line, all of your points go away. When you, you can go as slow as you want. When you stop, you're going to put your uh, parking brake on, put your gear shift into neutral, and honk your horn. This indicates for the judges that they can go and measure. So they'll go out and they have a measuring device that they use and they will uh, let you'll find out how far away from that line you were. Once they're done measuring, they're going to tap the side of your bus and that will be the indication that you're good to move on. And that is the last of our events. the rodeo course and if you think this is something that you would enjoy please go to your regional rodeo I'm sure it's happening soon in your neighborhood around where you live or state this is in the state of Ohio and we ours is April 23rd uh, also if you like what you see then please subscribe to our channel uh, and give us a like have a great day.